So, everybody, how are you? Okay, I hope you are feeling good today. This is our last chapters for the course Circuit Analysis 1 here at Gasset University. And the chapter will be on three phase circuits. Okay, it only be an introductory course, okay, uh, because, well, you will go on later on into your power courses to, you know, get into more details. So this is simple um, introductions to so-called polyphase circuits, okay? So any circuit or system in which the AC sources operate at the same frequency but different phases are called polyphase. So far, we have done only single phase only single phase. So pretty much uh, what it is is a single phase AC power system consists of a generator connected through a pair of wires or transmission line to a load. So, so far single phase, no problems. So now let's see what other phase that we have, okay. There's also two phase generator. Okay, so two phase generator would produce to voltages, okay, well, voltages, you know, produce from a generator with 90 degrees phase difference. Okay, so therefore, it could be like this, okay, so you have one, um, wave, right, VA, okay, another one would be 90 degrees difference. So this is two phase, okay. There's also three phase, okay, three phase generator, okay. So it would generate three sinusoidal, Voltages with the separation of 120 degree, 120 degrees phase different from each other. So all three of them would make 360 degrees. Okay, so therefore. So roughly, if I sketch this, okay, change colors. Let's take this blue one. So let's say if VA is like this, <laughs> VA, okay, uh, your VB, okay. So about 120, right? About 120, 90, about here, duh, like that, VB. So this is 120 degrees apart from A and B, right? And from B to C is also another 120 degrees apart. So we see, so this is between B and C is also 120 degrees. So C and A is also 120 degrees apart. Okay, so the three, what we're gonna do here is that the three sinusoidal voltages would have the same magnitude and frequency, but they're just, each is 120 degrees out of phase. Okay, so the three, Um, sinusoidal voltages okay, have the same magnitude magnitude okay and frequency and each is 120 degrees out of phase Right? Well, so these are other um, so-called the, the other difference between the single phase. Right? There's the single phase, two phase, and three phase. Right? So now let's go into uh, the wire system. If you actually draw it. Okay, uh, 
on the circuit or as a circuit wise. If the single phase, what we have seen, single phase, okay, system, of course, what we have always done so far is, of course, you have a water source, right, and it's connected to a load through two wires, okay, so to a load like this, okay. This is, we call this a two wire type. Okay. Another one, single phase also, okay, can be drawn like this. So this one has a neutral line, neutral line. So set at one set two and of course the source is the same. Okay. This is called the single phase system but three wire type. Okay. And for the two phase two phase system two phase systems okay we would have you can connect it in so called the three wire systems but of course the source they are not the same they are 90 degrees apart Right, and they're connected with the load. Right, so A A, neutral line, line B. Okay, so this is two phase three wire system. Okay, then there's a three phase. Okay, three phase. Three phase. Okay. The three phase we have what's called the four wire system. Or type. Okay. So therefore it may look like this. Zero degrees, line A, line B, of course they are 120 degrees apart. line C and there's a neutral line so we P this one one plus 120 degrees okay so these are how we we can so call draw the system okay uh, for us to see clearly and to analyze uh, your circuit okay so now let's see why do exactly do we need three phase okay why do we need three phase systems okay i'm going to try to explain okay try to explain to you why do we need um you know why can't just stay on with a single phase so let's say that we want to find current we're going to use currents to compare all the three systems okay for each type of generator okay so the first one is single phase a single phase system okay so let's say okay um, i'm gonna have 
a motor right generator right and my load is equal to 60 ohms and let's say this is 120 zero degrees volt okay the rotor okay so therefore you want to find the current right current IRL so my IRL is equal to 120 zero degrees divided by 60 zero degrees ohms equal to 2 zero degrees amps okay and the power to the load okay the total power is equal to right IRL square plus RL so therefore equal to 2 square times 60 equal to 240 watt okay well imagine that if you um, the wire of course right the wire has to be able to handle 2 amps and if we say that we have to use this um, wire and wire made out of coppers okay coppers so uh, if you think with that we have to use into these sections and these sections right so the amount of copper you know the amount of copper to make the wire okay so the copper wire cross section the amount of it that to make the the wire itself the copper okay would have to be equivalent to that it must be able to handle like 4 amps okay must handle just handle no 4 amps of course to this way and to this way right so 4 amps okay that's the single phase for the 2 amps uh, current the amount of copper that we need to use okay is equivalent to um, the amount that we have to make the wire to handle 4 amps second let's say that we're going to move on to a two phase system okay so right so the load on each one is on each um, set is oh, this is one this is two equal to 120 ohms and this is 120 90 degrees this is 120 zero degrees the voltage okay and this is the current goes like this so IRL1 and the current goes like this IRL2 okay and come together this node and go into neutral line so I neutral like here okay so therefore the load equivalent is 120 parallel each other so 60 ohms okay so IRL1 is equal to 120 zero degrees over 120 ohms so equal to 1 0 degrees amps IRL2 is 120 90 degrees over 120 right so this become 1 90 degrees amps so I in the neutral line is of course IRL1 plus IRL2 so the answer is 1.414 angle 45 degrees amps so therefore if we consider it again okay if we consider again let's find the power for this load or two loads okay so equal to i r l1 square times r1 plus i r l2 square times r l2 and the answer is 120 plus 120 equal to 241 okay same power delivered okay to the load and if we now if we look at the amount of wire that needed the amount of copper sorry the amount of coppers that needed to make the wire for this system to connect to this system right so there would be this one line that is like have to be able to handle one amps here right this one here right to be able to handle one amps and the neutral line right to be able to handle so called 1.414 so therefore the total cross sections for the wire 
you know, you know, the copper to make this wire, right, is able, you know, it has to be able to handle um, 1 plus 1 plus 1 1.414. So equal to 3.414 amps. So at least you can see that from the single phase, which is you have to have the so-called copper wire to be able to handle 4 amps has reduced down to 3.414 amps, right? Because you changed into the two-phase system. Now let's look at three-phase then. I suppose you were, you know, you can, you know, suspect what would happen. Okay. So in this case, okay. So a three-phase. Three phase, okay, All right. So, 120 degrees, you know, apart. Your motor, um, hold on. So, 180 ohms, and there's a neutral line, okay. So the equivalent load is 180 parallel 180. Oops, sorry. <laughs> equal to 60 ohms. Okay. So therefore, let's see. Let's calculate this. The current. Okay. So this is 120, 120 degrees. This is 120 volt, of course, zero degrees volt. And this is 120 minus 120 degrees volt. Okay, so IRL1 equal to 120 zero degrees divided by 180 ohms equal to 667 zero degrees milliamps. IRL2 equal to 120 plus 120 degrees over 180 equal to 667 120 degrees milliamps. And IRL3 equal to 120 minus 120 volt 80 equal to 667 minus 120 milliamps. Okay, if let's calculate the uh, uh, average power. Okay, the total average power for the load is I square RL1, RL1 plus IRL2 square plus RL2 plus IRL3 square RL3. The answer is to 140 watt again. And if I calculate the current in a neutral line, the current in a neutral line, okay, so IRL1 plus IRL2 plus IRL3 and you get it to be 0 amps. Okay. Amazing, no? You can do it. You use calculator. Okay. And so let's see. So if you think of the total copper cross section the that to make the wire, the total copper cross section Okay, to make the wire for this system, okay, it must be able to handle okay, 667 milliamps, right, from this here, plus 667 milliamps, plus 667 milliamps, and plus zero in the neutral line, and the answer is 2 amps. Equivalent load, okay, same average power absorbed by the uh, load, total load. And you see that the amount of coppers that to do the wiring system, you know, is less, comp you know, by half, right? From the single phase is 4 amps, right? 4 amps, right? But by the three phase is 2 amps. And not only that, with three phases, you can actually put three loads in there for each phase. So therefore, um, some of the big houses and factories, you know, they will prefer to use the three-phase system. Okay, so now we are going to get into um, three-phase topic. Oop, topics, three-phase systems. Okay. Okay. First, how do we? How many so-called um, connections we can do with the three-phase? Okay. So there are two of them: the Y connections and 
the delta connections. Okay. So let's look at the so-called three-phase generator first. Okay, three-phase generator, and how we can connect them. Okay, so it can be connected into a Y connections and delta connections. Okay, it um, the voltage source in a three-phase system can be either Y connected or delta connected. Okay. So let's look at the Y first. So the Y. So look like a shape of Y. Well, the first one could be the upside down Y. Neutral line and C, right? Okay, so we call this V A N, right? So you can see that A is a positive, positive um, so-called terminal. Ends the negative connected to N, okay? And then V B N, right? So B is on a positive and N is a negative, and this is of course V C N, okay? That can be connected as a actual like Y shape like this. Okay, so A B C. So this is V A N. It's in phaser form, please. V B N and V C N. Okay, this Y connected. Or it can be in these configurations. Oops, hold on. Oops. <laughs> okay, come on. So minus plus V A N V B N. VC in like this, okay. VAN, VBN, VCNs are called phase voltage. Phase voltage, okay. Right, so that's so called for the Y connected generator. If it's a delta, delta connections, okay, for the generator, it would look like this. Like delta is like a triangle, right? So positive, negative, like this. So A. B and C. So this is V A B. Right? A is positive. Minus terminal is connected to the B terminal. So this one would be V C A. Right? C is in positive. Right? This is C. Right? This is A. Right? And this is B. So this is V B C. Think of, think of it is like it's like you say A B C. So A B, right? B C and back to C A, right? So this become the phase voltage, okay, for the delta connected. Okay. Right. So what about well, if you have a three phase generator, you must have the load also three phase, right? So therefore, let's look at how we connected the load, okay? In so the Y connections, so three phase load, okay? So on the Y connected, so it would be just like the Y shape.
right so a b n and c so this is a y another another y is like this so a b n c so this is so called and each one is called is the load no for each phase So this is why connected for the three loads, a uh, three phase loads. Okay, if it's a uh, delta, delta, okay, delta connected for the load, cause it's the regular triangle shape, as we know it as delta, right? So A, B, and C. Okay, so. The impedance for each phase okay or it can be connected like this a b c and this is another one so this is delta load a three phase load okay in delta shape right so therefore Okay, therefore, what we're going to do in this um, class, okay, for this class, uh, we will learn, okay, how we to analyze the current, okay, uh, for the YY system, so Y generator, Y load, okay, the connections, okay, we can connect into Y generator, delta load also. And we can connect delta generator and delta load, and also delta generator and Y connected load. So there are possible four possible connections that we will do in this course. Okay, we will do in this course. Okay. Another um, thing I'm going to say is that what we're going to do in this course is we're only going to work with so-called a balance system okay we will work with what's called the balance system only okay balance system what it means by balance system is that for the generator okay the voltage okay on the generator side are said to be balanced okay when all of them, all three of them, okay, have so-called equal in their magnitude, magnitude, okay. But the only difference is that they are 120 degrees out of phase from each other. So this is so-called on the voltage size, side, 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 okay. For the load side, for the load side, okay, the balance load is okay, is one in which okay, the phase impedance. are equal okay in both the magnitude and in phase are equal in magnitude and in phase so therefore when you have both on the voltage generator side as defined here and the load as defined here we have a balance system and we will make our life easy in this course and we will work only with balance system okay before um, I wrap up this sessions okay I want to uh, tell you something about the three phase voltages 
on the generate on the generator side. Okay, since the three phase voltages are 120 degrees out of phase with each other, okay, there are two possible connections or combinations. Okay, two possible combinations for the three phase voltages. Okay. So the first one, the first one is defined as this. Well, when you have this set VAN equal to, right, the magnitude V, you know, V phase, zero degrees volt, okay, VBN equal to some magnitude, right, minus 120 degrees volt, and VCN equal to VP plus 120 degrees volt. If I um, draw it as a phasor diagram, as a vector, rotating vector, okay, and this is my VAN, okay, well, VAN is supposed to be zero degrees, right? VBN is minus 120, so minus 120 is here, so this is my VBN, and my VCN, right, is positive 120, so this is my VCN. And the way, you know, the sinusoidal, it repeats itself, you know, it rotates, right? So the vector rotated counterclockwise with the angular frequency omega like this, counterclockwise. If you place your eyes right here, if you place your eye, this is your eye, can you see your eyes, the eyelashes, right? Your eyes right here. How would you see this vector pass through your eyes when, as it rotates? you know, in front of your eyes. So, of course, you'll see VAN first, right? A, right? Then B would follow, right? B, and then C, and A would come back again. So, A, B, C, A, B, C, like this. So, you see A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C. So, if you, whenever you, therefore, whenever you have this sequence, it's called the A, B, C sequence. ABC sequence or positive as in when you when you say ABC ABC it goes in this direction like you have a positive X direction okay so it's called the positive sequence so this combination is called the ABC sequence or positive sequence another combination is another combination is if you have VAN equal to VP zero degrees VCN is equal to VP minus 120 degrees. VBN equal to VP positive 120 degrees. So let's do the same thing. If you draw the vector, right? So VAN, zero degrees, right? VCN minus 120, right? So this is VCN and this is your VBN. Okay, rotate counterclockwise. And you place your eyes right here, your eyes right here, look through this, and you see, how do you see this vector rotate in front of you? So you see A, C, B, A, C, B, A, C, B, A, C, B, right? So this sequence then, if you have this sequence, this sequence is called the A, C, B sequence. Or negative sequence. Why negative? Because when you said A, B, C, A, B, C, you go backward, A, B, C, A, B, C, right? So it's like you're going this direction, the negative directions, you know, if you think of a, you know, X axis, okay? So therefore, these are the two combinations that you have to uh, realize because in a problem that I will give you in the exam, I may say it, given a positive sequence with VAN equal to this, right, then you have to be able to know what VBN is, what VCN is, okay. So that's it, okay, for the so-called introduction that you need to know um, to be able to go on with the so-called YY connections, Y delta, delta Y, delta, delta connections. And we'll do that in the next sessions.
because this one is getting more than half an hour and you may be bored by now. Right, so see you next sessions. Bye.